It's a sport rich in history. With devoted fans and supreme athletes. A truly unique game that grips a nation. Blistering speed, incredible skill. Remarkable courage. This is the AFL. Australian football, often referred to as AFL or simply football, originates back to 1858 when a young man named Thomas Wentworth Wills decided that Australian cricketers needed a new way to keep fit during the winter. He created a game which drew upon the best aspects of all the known football codes. The result was the unique and innovative game with the first recorded match of Australian football taking place on the 7th of August, 1858. Over the next 40 years, the game flourished and clubs were formed throughout the country. Leagues were created in the Australian states of South Australia, Western Australia and Victoria. Popularity continued to grow and in 1897, a group of eight Victorian teams broke away from the state competition and formed the Victorian Football League. Today, the game has become Australia's national sport, played at all levels in the community. In 1990, the elite competition was renamed the AFL, the Australian Football League. It has become Australia's equivalent to the English Premier League in England and the National Football League in the USA. There are now 18 clubs in the competition. Each year they play a season of 22 games across every Australian state, with stadiums in every major capital city. The season eventually culminates in the biggest day on the Australian sporting calendar, when 100,000 impassioned fans fill the stands of the MCG in Melbourne to watch the two best teams play off in the championship game, the AFL Grand Final. AFL is now becoming a truly international sport and is already being played in more than 50 countries. AFL matches are watched in over 350 million homes across 249 territories worldwide and with an average of over 35,000 supporters at each game, the AFL exceeds competitions like the English Premier League and US Major League Baseball in terms of attendance. The unique mix of speed, strength and skill makes AFL a game unlike any other. <laughs> AFL is played with an oval leather ball. All players wear a number on the back of their team uniform to help identify them. This number has no relation to their position or skill level. The game takes place on a grass oval. Unlike most other sporting codes, the size of the playing surface differs from ground to ground. An average field is 165 metres long and 135 metres wide, or in yards, 180 by 150. A white boundary line designates the field of play. The ground is also marked with two 50 metre or 55 yard arcs, a centre square and a centre circle. At each end of the field is a goal square marked in front of the two goal posts, which are 6.4 metres or 7 yards apart. Both teams have 22 players, each with their own position based on their size and skills. 18 players start on the field and four on the bench, one of whom is a substitute who can replace another player at any point in the game. Generally, six players start in the forward line, six in the back line and six in the midfield. 
The forward line positions include a full forward, two forward pockets, a centre half forward and two half forward flanks. The main objective of the forward line is to kick goals. The full forward and centre half forward are usually big, strong players, similar to a power forward in basketball. The forward pockets and half forward flanks are smaller and quicker, comparable to a striker in soccer. The midfield consists of a ruckman, a rover, a ruck rover, a centre and two wings. The ruckman is usually the tallest player on the team. They contest centre bounces and ball ups and hit the ball down to their smaller teammates, in some ways resembling a centre in basketball. The rover, ruck rover and centre aim to win possession and distribute to their team comparable to basketball's point guards. The wing players are similar to attacking midfielders in soccer. Their main objective is to provide attack for their team and kick it to their forwards. They're usually fast and agile. In the back line, a team will have a full back, two back pockets, a centre half back and two half back flanks. These players match up on the opposition forwards and aim to stop them from scoring goals. They are normally a similar size and weight to their direct opponent, so that they can adequately match up on them. Defenders should also be able to turn defence into attack and make their opposition accountable, as one of the unique features of AFL is that any player may kick a goal. The game is officiated by a team of nine umpires. This includes three field umpires who are on field with the players and uphold the rules, four boundary umpires who determine if the ball has left the field of play and throw it back in if it has, and two goal umpires who are judge and signal goals and behinds. The game begins with the centre bounce. The match is played in four 20-minute quarters, to which time is added to compensate for the time when the ball is not in play, such as the time taken to return the ball to the centre to restart play after a goal has been scored. AFL games have a six-minute break after the first and third quarters and a 20-minute break at half-time, meaning a full game will normally run for around three hours. When a player has possession of the ball, they may run in any direction, providing they bounce it every 15 metres or 16 yards. They may dispose of it by either kicking or handballing. Inside 50. It's just a touch to kick the ball, they guide it down over their boot with one hand and kick towards their target. To handball, they balance the ball on one hand and make a fist with the other. They then strike the ball with the fist in the direction of their target. The most spectacular part of play is the mark. <laughs> when a player catches the ball directly on the full from a kick. They may step back from the spot they marked and dispose of the ball undeterred, or they may play on immediately. A player may prevent their opponent from marking by punching the ball. This is called spoiling. Advantage by Duncan runs to 50. Duncan for Geelong kicks the goal. When an attacking player kicks the ball between the two centre posts, a goal is awarded and six points go to their team. If an opponent gets a touch on the ball, if it hits the goal post, or if the ball travels over the line between a goal and a smaller behind post, a behind is scored and one point is given. When the final siren blows, the team with the most points is declared the victor. And to the victor go the spoils. Players can kick. He's going the top here. Thomas gets onto it. Handball. Or punch the ball. Handballs to Collins. That's a throw. If a player throws or hands the ball to another player, 
or drops the ball whilst being tackled, a free kick will be given to the opposition. Buddy Franklin goes back. Advantage is paid. It's a one-man back He's away. Running a player may run with the ball for as long as they wish, provided they bounce it at least every 15 metres. He can't bounce it. Oh, he kicks it through on the ball. If they don't do this, they will be penalised. This is referred to as running too far. Gilbert's got it. Takes on Rich. Gilbert got it from Fish. He's gone too far. Once a player has possession, they must kick or handball before they're tackled. If a player is deemed to have had prior opportunity to dispose of the football and fail to do so, the free kick is awarded to the tackler. Gathers it well with one hand and takes them on. Oh, and he's dragged down again. A player attempting to tackle must grab the opposition between the shoulders and knees. Taken by Garland. Can he outrun Fletcher? No, sir. Any contact above the shoulders will be penalised for too high. Created something out of nothing. Looks up. Ling and full tilt kept coming. Hands to his ground and he'll get the free kick, lads, and take it high. And any below the knees will be penalised for tripping. A player cannot push another in the back. This applies when tackling and also in marking contests. If a player is tackled, grabbed or held when they don't have the ball, they will be awarded a free kick. This is called holding the man. He just creates that surge for the West Coast Eagles. The midfield players can go to the ball with great confidence. Free kick, Carl! Oh, Start on the ball now! Oh, Couldn't get free, hadn't to be two. When a player has marked the ball or received a free kick, their opposition must be careful not to further infringe. If a player argues with the umpire or further impedes an opposition player, they may be disciplined with a 50 metre penalty, equivalent to 55 yards. Here's the 50. 50 metres. Yeah, what's the law? You cannot over encroach the mark. He was on the mark, he stepped over and he got his right way. When the ball crosses the boundary line on the full from a kick, it is the opposition's free kick. <laughs> oh, it's disappointing, isn't it? If it bounces beforehand or comes off a player's hand, it is a throw-in, unless a player is adjudged to have done it deliberately. This also results in an opposition's free kick. Harbrow, back of the pack, needs to show some points. Oh, that's intentional. Oh, baby! Absolutely intentional. A player may kick the ball directly off the ground, providing there is no chance of them kicking an opposition player. If a player is a judge to be putting an opponent in danger, the opponent will be awarded a free kick. A team is only allowed 18 players on the field at once. If found to have extra players on the field, or if a player does not enter the field through the designated interchange area, the opposition will be awarded a free kick and a 50 metre penalty. The elite national competition features clubs from all over Australia. There are 18 AFL teams in total, 10 from Victoria and two from each of New South Wales, Queensland, Western Australia and South Australia. In 1991, the Adelaide Crows became the first team from the state of South Australia to join the AFL. Their fanatical fans make home games in Adelaide an intimidating and hostile environment. The Crows have seen many brilliant players wear their navy blue, red and gold. Great start for the Crows! Including the superb Mark Rusciuto and speedy Patrick Dangerfield. Unbelievable! It is crazy good! In 1997, the Fitzroy Lions and Brisbane Bears merged and became the Brisbane Lions. In what many consider the greatest dynasty in the modern era, the Lions won three consecutive premierships from 2001 to 2003, led by strong forward Alastair Lynch. The Lions play their home games in Brisbane, where great players like Tom Rockliffe wear the maroon, gold and blue.
The Carlton Football Club is one of the original teams that formed the AFL in 1897. Carlton is an inner city suburb of Melbourne and the club has a proud and decorated history. Many stars of the game have pulled on the famous navy blue jumper, including the elusive Mark Murphy. Attacking 50, set sail and kicks the Blues in front. And champion captain Chris Judd. Also one of the founding teams is powerhouse club Collingwood. The Magpies have an enormous and passionate fan base. They fill the stadium for home games in Melbourne and their roar can be heard for miles. The black and white stripes have been worn by attacking defenders like Harry O'Brien and classy midfielders like Scott Pendlebury. The Essendon Football Club is another of the original AFL teams and won the first ever league premiership in 1897. The Bombers play their home games in Melbourne and their black jumpers with red sash have been worn by many brilliant players like the legendary James Hurd and the outstanding Dyson Heppel. Heppel, great challenge. Classy stuff from Dyson Heppel. Brilliantly done. In 1995, the Fremantle Football Club became the second West Australian team to join the AFL. Based in the harbourside city of Fremantle, they play home games in Perth and wear purple and white. The Dockers have been led by many great players, including AFL and club legend Matthew Pavlich. Off to Pavlich, sell the dummy. Pavlich screws it around the corner. And the exciting Nathan Fife. Geelong, the, the Geelong Cats wear we blue and white Geelong, hoops and play their home games in the football-obsessed Victorian city of Geelong. An inaugural AFL team, they have been one of the most successful teams of the recent era. The Cats have boasted some of the most exciting players in the AFL, including the inspirational Tom Harley and courageous Joel Selwood. And that man is Joel Selwood. That is a final goal. The Gold Coast Suns entered the league in 2011, becoming the second AFL team based in the state of Queensland. Playing home games on the picturesque Gold Coast, they wear red, gold and blue. They are led by the dazzling Gary Ablett Jr. Needs to kick the goal, Gary Ablett. They need the captain to kick along and strong. And excellent young gun, David Swallow. By Jolly, off to Swallow, runs to 25. Did he delay it too long? No. Entering the league in 2012, the Greater Western Sydney Giants became the second AFL team based in New South Wales. The Giants play their home games in Sydney and wear orange, charcoal and white. Put them in front, inside five minutes. You can. The young squad features standouts like the smooth-moving Tom Scully and strong key forward Jonathan Patton. The Hawthorne Football Club joined the league in 1925 and is based in the eastern suburbs of Melbourne. The Hawks play their home games in Melbourne and Tasmania's Launceston. They wear brown and gold stripes and have been led by greats of the past such as Dermot Brereton and stars of the current era like the incredible Lance Buddy Franklin. It's a grand old flag, it's a high fly. The Melbourne flag. Football Club was formed in 1858. The Demons are Australia's oldest football club and were dominant in the 1950s under legendary coach Norm Smith. They have seen stars of the game like goal kicker Gary Lyon and current day midfielder Jack Trengove don the red and blue jumper. Right to the top of the square. Martin in line, couldn't take it. Trengove, front and square. North Melbourne joined the AFL in 1925. The Kangaroos were a powerful team during the 1990s and play their home games in Melbourne and Hobart. Their blue and white stripes have been worn by consistent stars like Brent Boomer Harvey. Harvey Petrie. Harvey found a way through to the bounce. Hammond at home. And hard-hitting players like Jack Zebel. Who's tackled hard and 
decisively. In 1997, the Port Adelaide Football Club joined the AFL, becoming the second club from South Australia. We are Port Adelaide Magpies. They had already won 36 premierships in the South Australian National Football League and were the dominant team in that competition. The power were black, white and teal and brilliant players like Travis Boak and the explosive David Roden have represented the club. Roden from nowhere! Three in a row, Port Adelaide! Richmond Football Club was established in 1885 and joined the AFL in 1908. They immediately had a huge and passionate supporter base from the once working class Melbourne suburb of Richmond. Many superstars have worn the Tigers black with yellow sash, including cult hero Matthew Richardson. Richardson's got six! And the unrelenting Dustin Martin. This guy's done a lot tonight. Cotchen inside 50. Well done, Martin. Yeah, that's good. The St Kilda Football Club was one of the eight inaugural teams. They wear red, white and black and are a proud club with a plethora of stars. The Saints play home games in Melbourne and have boasted some of the best players in the AFL, including the silky skilled Nick Del Santo. And Del Santo does sit now. And the versatile Brendan Goddard. Goddard! Oh! In 1982, one of the original AFL teams, the South Melbourne Football Club, relocated from Victoria to New South Wales and became the Sydney Swans. The team is commonly referred to as the Bloods and over recent times have been a consistent threat to the Premiership, led by brilliant captain Adam Goods, Goods comes and goes. and electrifying forward Sam Reed. Here they come, Reed's got a big couple and he just went up like a jack in a box. In 1987, the West Coast Eagles became the first Western Australian side to join the AFL. The Eagles play home games in Perth and a huge supporter base make games here a daunting task for opposing teams. A multitude of stars like the dangerous Luke Shuey. But that Shuey boot to ball. It's not a bad kick. It's another goal to the Eagles. And electrifying Nick Natnui have soared to great heights in the blue, white and gold. Natnui, what a mark. The Western Bulldogs, formerly known as Footscray, entered the league in 1925. The Bulldogs have a fanatical supporter base. They play home games in Melbourne and the royal blue, white and red has been worn by stars like midfielder Ryan Griffin to Griffin who tops off a very, very good night and the versatile Robert Murphy. Still Murphy, still Murphy, kick to the goals, it's a goal! Probably my earliest memories was um, kicking the footy with my neighbours. I lived next door to two Indigenous kids, Michael Walters, who plays at the Fremantle Dockers, and Chris Aaron, who plays at Carlton. They live either side of me. I used to use my rubbish bins as goals, and yeah, started kicking the footy that way, and then progressed through and played at you know, waffle level, and now at West Coast. When we first come out to Australia, um, I didn't really speak that much English, and I went to an English language school, and. It was pretty hard being involved with a lot of multicultural people. But as soon as I started playing footy, I was bringing home new mates and telling mum and dad how great it is being in the footy club. Growing up in, in Australia, coming from a different background, coming straight from Fiji, uh, my, my parents didn't know really anyone over here, so they worked pretty hard and they found it pretty hard to get into community and, and meet new people. But through football, they met new parents and uh, you know, they made some really good friends that are sort of friends for life. and it's a, Pretty fantastic thing. Yes, he does. Uh, the benefits about playing AFL certainly are the people you meet and the friends you make, but I think also just being involved in a club and that sense of belonging is something that's really important for, for people, especially youngsters growing up, and, and that was something that I've always been proud of. Probably one of the major reasons why I play sport, why I've always played sport, is, is because uh, you know you gain mateship and, and that camaraderie that you have on the field and off the field is very special. I love running, I love jumping, I love kicking, I love catching and, and that's what kept getting me to each session, not, not the end product. That's obviously a dream. I just love doing all those things and that's my advice, just keep loving those simple things. I played a lot of sports growing up and that's the thing with AFL, it, it literally transfers all those sports into, into one I feel and um, yeah, I, I couldn't ask for a better game to, 
be able to, um, you know, utilise all those skills I learnt from all the other sports into AFL. It's not just about the sport itself, but it's about how it transcends so many different barriers that exist in our society, whether it be race, uh, your religion, sexual orientation, a whole host of things. I obviously knew that I was, um, you know, I had a different skin colour um, compared to the other kids around me, but I, I don't think once did I ever think that it meant I was a, a different person. I totally understood that and, um, you know, if I had challenges from other people, from other kids, uh, I, I never let it affect me personally because I, I knew that I, I was the same person to them and I'm sure by how I treated others or acted, that would come through in the end, race or different background, no matter what. First thing I was told was, was just dare to dream. You know, a lot of people will say, you can't do this, you can't do that. I never thought I'd play football, being from my background. And uh, yeah, just to never give up and, and just have fun at the end of the day. Every opportunity to play, whether it's socially, uh, whether it's an organised um, competition, but no doubt just being able to, to get out there and play a game of football is certainly the best way to learn. My vision for football overseas would be for other people, other nations, other demographics to be able to enjoy what I've been able to enjoy, a sport which has no colour. It can grow to be a worldwide game because it's such uh, a game where you don't have to be a certain size or a certain build. You, know, you, can, have, you can be short, you can be tall, there's a, there's a place for everyone. I think it's going to provide kids a, another opportunity to do better for themselves and their families. The market's huge overseas and it you know, you know, provides more opportunities uh, for them to come and, and, and play our game, which, which I, I feel like is the best game in the, in the world. And they're away. Ballantyne. Bounce through the midfield. Pavlich, half forward. Taylor, big fist. Back to Ballantyne. Back to Pavlich. Can he kick this one? Handballs it back to Ballantyne. Kicks a goal. The ricochets with Robinson. And where's Eddie? Walker's got the sit here. Oh, 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 what a screamer. Everyone's up with that one. He's up, up. He's got the talk going in. We well, saw him practicing some barrels pre game, and that's one that he didn't get onto that almost went to the middle. And they have the advantage, they do. Johnson goes with a magnificent kick to Stokes. He looks inside, he sees Mooney. Could have gone himself. Mooney better not miss this one up. Into the open goal, gets it. Liberatore. Not the first time a Liberatore's taken a free kick for holding the ball. Hall almost marking that at the back. Dalhouse from the impossible angle. Oh! The ball up, Hartland. Stole it, but a handball missed the target. Ablett is away. Got from Brennan. Needs to kick the goal, Gary Ablett. They need the captain to kick it long oh, that is and strong. Easing it up here, the Suns. Chapman, great vision. But how does a man get on his own so far, standing in the corridor like Wojcicki? No one near him. No one near him at all. Well, he's going to just take him on. He's going to keep going. Wojcicki, oh, another that. bounce to 40 metres. It'll bring the house down. And why wouldn't it? It's brilliant footy. Yeah, the other end, Rhino, unfortunately, not getting it in there. McKenzie takes off, uses some pace, almost within range. There's no one in the square. Oh, he keeps please. it low. This would be one of the goals of the year. Yes! It doesn't get any better than that. AFL is becoming a global sport, with over 100,000 players internationally spread across many countries. AFL Premiership season, final series and grand final matches are broadcast online worldwide and on television in 249 territories. To find out how to watch AFL in your region, please visit afl.com.au forward slash broadcast guide. Or to find out more about getting involved with AFL in your country, please log on to afl.com.au forward slash international.